last video, we bought this set of wedges as well as some other Kirkland Signature products from Costco, totaling about 200 plus pounds. Today, we're gonna to test all those items and then actually see, are these gonna go in the bag? That sounded really good. That was struck a wedge like that in ages. <laughs> Guys, how you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. Simon down here at Sanford Springs Golf Club. We're going to test try all the Kirkland Signature stuff. This isn't really a new review. There's been tons of reviews on this product. Uh, Rick's tested it, TXG, uh, the guys over there. Gabe, which obviously gave me the inspiration for last video. So go and check his channel out. Let's play through. So there's been tons of reviews and overwhelming support that this is a great value product. But what I want to say, eight months, 10 months down the line since they've been released is actually they're even better value than they were when they first came out because there's a lot of stock of it, you can get a hold of it, and they're not extortionate pricing. We're talking, if you wanted a second-hand set of clubs, wedges, tightless, tailor-made, you're going back five years ago, battered, an SM6, an SM5, going for 50 pounds each, or, a brand new set of these. Now there are cons, it's not all pros, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, but that's what I wanna to talk to you about today and see whether these could be a nice set of wedges for yourself. Incredible support on last video, over 50,000 views in a day, which is by far more than I could have ever expected. So thank you to everyone that watched it, liked it, commented, shared it, you name it. If you wouldn't mind liking this one, that'd be fantastic. And I did ask in the comment section, where do you want to see me go next? And the overwhelming support was to Decathlon. So we're going to do that next week. I'm going to go to Decathlon. We're going to have a look at their package sets. We're going to have a look at their balls, everything, good value, and make some purchases. Guys, Thank you ever so much for watching. Let's get into the video. And this is the equipment we will be using today. Obviously, you bought this from Costco as well. 15 pounds for three gloves, 24 pounds for two dozen three piece balls, which, let's be honest, would suit the majority of you guys. Spring speed, spin, everything else. I'll be interested to see how they feel and sound. That's pretty much how I decide I like a golf ball. If it feels and sounds good off the club face, I mean, that's pretty much as good as I want. Okay, there might be difference between spin rate, RPM, but even at my level, I wouldn't be able to tell you the blindest bit of difference. Three carburetor gloves. I don't normally use leather gloves in the summer, 28, 30 degree heat, my hands sweat, they're ruined after six, seven holes. But for five pounds for three, that's good value. When you're spending 18, 20 pounds on one glove and you get two rounds out of it, personally, I just rather wear like a rain grip glove because uh, it's just, I don't want to spend 20 quid around essentially. But for this, I'll be interested to see how they feel and uh, how the balls feel as well off the club face. So let's get these open and give me my first thoughts. Now, I'm not going to spend ages on the gloves and balls because, let's be honest, they're gloves and balls. But first try of the Cleveland, Kirkland signature leather glove. As I say, don't really wear them that much. But just from the general feel, I mean, it does feel really soft, which is good. Slightly thicker than from what I can remember when I used to wear or use like pure touch foot joy gloves. I don't even know if they make them. And they were like soft as silk. But again, you were lucky to get 12 holes out of the thing. So they definitely feel a lot more durable. But overall, I think the fit is good. I wouldn't say it's the highest quality glove in the world, but you are getting three for the price of one. When I say the highest quality, like the stitching in the top there, or the stitching in the bottom, again, like in the middle of the gloves, for example. It's not like it's been hapdash, but it's definitely gonna be, you're not gonna wear this for life, are you? You're gonna get, hopefully, three, four weeks of golf out of it. So, I think for the value, very good. And then the Kirkland Signature Ball. It's got the urethane cover, therefore it's gonna give you that spin, it's gonna give you that feel of like a tour performance ball that all the high level brands have and you kind of there's a lot of golfers that will only ever use that so this could be a good cheap per alternative if you want that feel i would say though it is slightly shinier and when i'm digging my nail into it obviously that's not a thorough test but i think over the years of just testing golf balls it does seem on a glance slightly more shiny 
and slightly a bit harder than what I would perceive a TP5 or a Pro V1 to actually feel like. And I'm being very critical in both of those products because I'm such an enthusiast for the underdog. I could easily stand there and just go, they're as good as anything out there. They're as good as a Pro V1. They're as good as a pure touch foot jewelry glove, but that just wouldn't be true. But for the 20% lack of feel and quality, again, I'm gonna hit the golf balls in a minute. And again, I'll probably be so enthusiastic that they feel good, sound good, that I'll be like, they're as good as anything out there. For the 20% that you're probably lacking in quality, softness, durability, you are saving 300% in value. The gloves, 300%. If I was to buy three pure gloves, that's gonna cost me 50, 60 pounds. The balls, 24 for 24 balls. That's 12 pounds a dozen. If I was to get Chrome Softs, TP5s, again, 300%. So for the 20% you're losing, you're actually saving yourself 300% in value. Now for a guy that said he wasn't gonna talk about the balls and gloves that much, that was a lot of talking. So let's get these wedges out. Let's give them it. Here they are, ladies and gentlemen. In the flesh all wrapped up. So first things first, let's talk about what you are getting and what you're not getting. What you are getting is a 52, a 56 and a 60. And this is the first con, I would say. I just don't think that's the right loss for the people that these are targeted for. I'd much rather see 50, 54, 58. I know 60 degrees is that kind of staple club that everyone thinks, oh, I need a 60 degree wedge, but you just don't. And I do believe, even though it's saying the gap wedge at 52, for a lot of you guys that have got cavity backs, ping G-series irons, tailor-made RBZs, I feel like you're going to need a pitching wedge and a gap wedge in that set to then gap into these, because these are very much your Vokies, your Clevelands, your tall professional very much control, not necessarily distance based wedges. I think these tick a lot of boxes. The red might put a few people off, but that is Kirkland Signature's logo. So I completely understand why they've slapped it on the back of it. It reminds me of a tailor-made R-series wedge. I'll grab you an image. Overall, not that much going on the back, which normally screams class when you look at the best looking wedges in the world. Something that I have noticed, obviously with these wedges is that with the 52 gap wedge, this is almost like concaved here. A lot more weight's probably towards the sole or the face. Whereas the toe on the other two wedges, the higher lofted wedges, a lot more weight at that top right toe end, probably to balance this set nicely. So there's been thought, I feel, that's gone into this. Let's talk about what else you're getting. You're getting a true temper shaft. And let's be honest, it's gonna be exactly the same as every other true temper shaft that would be in 120, 130, 140 pound wedge. They're not gonna design a Kirkland Signature True Temper Shaft. The grip is Kirkland Signature own, not a tall velvet, and to be honest, it doesn't feel great. It feels very thin as well, very much undersized. The complete opposite of the grips that I've currently got on my wedges, which isn't a bad thing. The reason I don't like my wedges, or feel like I don't like them, is because the grip's so big. I feel like I'm just swinging a shaft. There's just no weight to it. I have no trust, no feel of where that head is in my swing. I like it. That sounded really good. That sounded really good. I was struck a wedge like that in ages. <laughs> hope this is the right yardage, because if so, I'm all over it. I hope the clubhouse is watching. That's more like it, fat. <laughs> That's what I'm more used to. Now, if you tried and tested a lot of wedges, you would agree with me that the majority of time, affordable wedges always get let down from the full swing. That's why wedges are somewhat that kind of difficult club to manufacture and design. Not only has it got to be good around that 30 yard, 40 yard chip shot, pitch shot, whatever it is, but it's also got to be good from 100 yards as well. And I was skeptical, but I've been proven wrong. Those first two shots, obviously the third one, nice, heavy, fat, back to the normal Simon golf. But the first two, oh my, they were struck, they were ripped, and they fizzed through the air. Pretty impressed. Now with the quality, aesthetics, and sound all being there, and when you weigh up the cons of, okay, no customization, grip, being a bit on the 
weaker slash smaller side bit chunkier from that top line no customization bounces could be a bit more varied this is a set to please everyone and that's exactly what they've done they've come out with a set that is going to appeal to 60 percent of the golfing market and i think at 150 for three brand new wedges i think they've done incredibly well and with the second hand market where it is as i've shown old wedges tightest wedges ones that are basically broken and destroyed going for the same amount of money i think it'd be stupid for you not to go down this route and for the more veteran players under the microscope you will be able to tell the difference between this and a 150 pound wedge that being said is it going to make that much difference so the all important question simon are you going to put these in the bag yes you know why because i feel like i'm more confident with these than the other wedges and when it comes down to wedges putting the lower end of the bag the finesse side of this game confidence is everything i couldn't care less the head what it looks like the shaft you name it if you are confident with something it could be 20 years old but it finds the fairway you always get within six foot you always hold those four foot putts by all means do not get rid of that club confidence is absolutely everything in this game and if I could sell confidence I'd be the best golf coach in the world guys if you like this video leave it a like subscribe if you're new catch you guys there